It's now, it's the, now we're live. Now we're live. Now we're live. Now it says we're live. And we're late. Two minutes. Two minutes. Well, I guess you could say 32 minutes because we're usually on here by eight. Oh, yeah. So what's going on this morning? I don't even know what today is. 16th. 16th of March at 8.32 a.m. How's everybody doing? 16th. You know what that means? What's that? If I'm correct, we have nine days until the Victorian crown pigeon egg hatch. Really? Nine days? Nine days. I just just looked on the camera outside to where I can see them. It's not like up close. Right. But I wanted to make sure after all the rain we had yesterday that he or she is still sitting. And yes, that is the case. Nine days. Nine days left. I'm getting kind of excited and kind of nervous at the same time. <laughs> I bet. Wow. Nine days. I didn't know it was nine days left. Yes. The 25th is what I'm thinking mm -hmm. is when it's going to hatch. But, you know, it could be a couple of days earlier than right. that. Because I'm anticipating that he started sitting or she started sitting the day that I was in St. Andrews on that Saturday. So if it was any day closer or sooner than that, then, you know, we'll have a baby earlier. Could be seven days. Could be six days. Could be six days. <clears throat> Y'all, I really, really, really hate that they chose that second nest location because there is no cover from the weather. And I just hate to see a bird sitting out in the rain. Well, they in the wild. I know, <clears throat> but. If they in the wild, they're on. Um... Here's the deal. Is they had a choice. They oh, yeah. had a choice to choose under the cover. Or well, they knew what was up. They knew something. They knew something more than I would have. They knew what well, is warm. I would warm. not have sat in the wide open when I had a cover. But, you know, so far, so good. So far, so good. So far, um, I was outside the other morning when May Carl was feeding them. And I think if I'm not mistaken, it was him on the nest at the time. Uh -huh. And he got up because she was feeding. And she thought, oh, I wish I had a way to get up there and, and, and candle that egg. Because that's the norm is when she comes in to feed, whoever's on the nest, that's like swap time. It's the indication to them that, you know, I told her, I said, you know, if, you, if you're ever a little <laughs> off with their feeding time, that may mess them up yeah. with their sitting arrangement because... That seems to be a swap time. Somebody's either sitting longer or shorter. <laughs> the bad end of the deal or the good end of the deal. However you want to look at it. Of course, if it's raining, it's the bad end of the deal. That's funny. That next one has to yeah. get up there in the rain. But That's funny. Y'all, it is so cool to see the babies. I just, we've been, Mary Carl and I have been kind of Googling and looking at what the babies look like. And they are absolutely a miniature version of the parents. They really are. I've seen pictures of the, the babies too. And they are just like a. It's just like a stuffed animal. It really is. I mean, there's not <clears throat> many birds that I would say come out looking like, you know, the parents, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I got something in my eye. Um, but they look like just little miniature <laughs> versions of the parents. They've got the little. I, I call <clears throat> it a fante because that's what Mary Carl called it at one point when she was about three years old. She called that thing on the top of their head, whether it be a peafowl or, or, or Victorian crown pigeon, she called it a fante. So they even have that. It is a, it's a precious sight. I mean, look at this. This is, how old is that one? Oh gosh. I don't know. That one's pretty, pretty young. That one's pretty young. That, that, that's amazing to me that they, they're so beautiful. At birth, because most birds are ugly when they're born. <laughs> they are. I mean, I hate to say that, especially pigeons. You're right. They are. Um, and this is a pigeon, but Mary Carl's domesticated pigeons are just ugly when mm. they are born. I mean, like so ugly, when you look at it, you would say. That's that not a pigeon. That, well, or if you were the mama, you'd say, there's no way that's my baby. <laughs> there's another one. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. A, bit, a little bit older. But look at that. Is that not precious? And they stay with their parents for quite some time. Um, that's another thing I hate about the nest choice is that baby's going to be exposed to weather. But, you know, they're going to sit on top of it and cover it up. They and, are. 
They're going to take care of it. Well, they're going to take, I'm not worried about that, but I just hate that they chose the lesser of the two areas. That's know. if it hatches. Jason, <clears throat> we don't say if. <laughs> we say when. That's when it hatches. Um, Mary Carl's being kind of negative, too. Oh, really? Yeah. She said, do you think the baby's going to make it? And I said, of course. And she said, well, I'm going to say it's not. And I said, why? And she said, because <clears throat> it seems like when I don't expect something to make it, that's when it does. I got you. And so. So she want to get her hopes up. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. But she I want to get her hopes up. I, I'm not that way. I'm I'm positive from the get-go. And then when it doesn't hatch, then I'm disappointed. <laughs> but I think it's going to hatch. I really do. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's my honest opinion. I'm not just saying that. I think it's going to hatch. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing now. You're right. I mean, they know what they're doing. They've been practicing for so long. They know what they're doing. I agree. The Victorian crowns, they, um, they've been doing this for quite a while. They have. Just they not have. ours. What? Just not our pair. Oh, our pair's a... been practicing on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. For, they've been practicing. For a long time. So, yeah. Finally. Just, just. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Hot Fingers coffee. Crossed. Hot, hot coffee this morning. Well, my, my roll tag got knocked out of the SEC tournament last night. And that um, may have something to do with the reason we're a little bit late. Yeah, it was late. That game came on at 8.30. Jason told me last <sighs> night, he and Mary Carl were going to watch a movie. And he said, uh, the game <clears> comes <throat> on. And I, he said, it doesn't come on until 8.30, though. So we'll have time to get a movie in. And then I can watch the game. Yeah. I said, you know what that means? He said, <laughs> No. And I said, the live's going to be late tomorrow because you're going to have to sleep in. And that's what happened. It was late. That was a late game. And yeah. it was disappointing, right? It was. It was disappointing. And the top three seeds are out. Alabama, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Well, I must say, when I, I didn't know who won last night because yeah. obviously I didn't stay up to yeah. see the end. But when I woke up this morning, the first thing I did was Google the score. And I said, uh-oh, this isn't <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh oh. Ooh. So Alabama's out of the SEC tournament. Alabama's out. You know what? It's this it's it's not the tide year this year. They've they've been good, but just um don't don't have a good defense. Don't play defense and just try to outscore everybody and that eventually catches up to you. That's okay because March Madness is gonna continue with the Victorian Crown Pigeon. That's shape. right. We're gonna we're gonna celebrate. That's it's right. not gonna be basketball, but it's gonna be birds. It remind me, Hoss Tools did a March Madness tournament with tomatoes. Oh, really? And how'd they do that? They had a bracket, and they had all. It was like maybe the top eight or top twelve. I can't remember how many it was. Uh huh. And the the people voted on it. Of what they type were, of tomato they like? Yeah. Oh. So it started out with four, like a issy, like a, a tournament. Uh huh. And, and it's down to uh, Halsinator and, man, I can't remember what the, uh, daggummit, I can't remember what it is. Halsinator and one more there, and I can't remember what it is now. Well, that's pretty I smart. I saw it yesterday. It was pretty smart. It was fun. That's pretty <clears> smart. <throat> so, we have people all over the United States, not just in the SEC, so. I know, but. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they may not can relate to what we're talking about. <laughs> It's especially if you're not basketball fans, I was fixing dude. to say that, especially if you don't watch basketball which, better boy that's it okay it's Halsonator and better boy okay well may the best team win may the or best tomato team win. may the best tomato win <laughs> right that's right uh got Dee, Dee up here in tow this morning uh she she's decided that she likes <clears throat> the lives now she does like the lives just don't touch her or <laughs> don't pick her up don't mess with her don't mess with Don't it. Don't mess with it. Well, we got about two inches of rain yesterday. We did. But I wanted to say this in case somebody doesn't know or may have forgotten is that yesterday was March 15th, which is a big day. I think I know why. In our zone. Now, I don't know anything outside zone eight. But Here I'm, we I'm, are I'm talking sure, about the SEC again. <clears throat> I'm sure, I'm sure it'd be easy to figure out. But here on March the 15th, that is the day we fertilize roses. Is that all roses? All roses. All roses get fertilized on March the 15th. So it it, it landed perfectly because I put the fertilizer out on the 14th. Rain yesterday. It's perfect because you want to put your granular fertilizer out 
Right when it rains. When it's going to rain. You don't want to, you don't want it to sit there for several days because it could burn your plants. So. so while you say March the 15th, you need to look at the weather. And look at the weather, mid-March. But March 15th is the, is the date that Jason from Petals always deems is the day to start fertilizing roses. And you're going to do it on every 15th weather. Yeah. You know, watch your weather. Watch your Until weather. September. Oh, until September. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So just that's kind of when the growing season ends for roses. Yeah, you want to start them. You want them to start going dormant at that point. You don't want to fertilize them in the fall and winter because you could all that new growth going to die. Okay, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Yep. So just wanted to put that out there. And talking about roses, I got a new rose book, and so far I'm absolutely loving this book. It is called The Rose Rustlers. Is that something Jason told you about? He did. He mentioned this book. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, when you received the book, you started flipping through pages and you saw some pictures of Mr. Jason <laughs> from did. Petals from the Past. I did see Jason in there. There he is right there. Right there. But the Rose Rustlers were a group of people and mainly students from Texas A&M. And they would Which go, is where Jason where graduated went, from. That's where you graduated from. And they would go to old antebellum home sites, old abandoned home sites, cemeteries, and find these old antique roses that people thought that were either gone or they found new new breeds of roses that they um they didn't know existed. I could have been a part of that. I wouldn't have known all the <laughs> science to it, but I could have I could have gone to those abandoned places and help them but hence the name rose wrestlers but it's a great great book I'll, i'm so far i am loving this book and it's all old antique roses where'd you Beautiful. get it off amazon i got it off amazon okay i got it off amazon so if you're a rose lover uh look at look into getting this book good um i'm loving it i'm absolutely loving it absolutely loving it i see a lot of questions about granddaddy's tractor uh it cranked back up and but that's about it. That's about it. I'm going to get it back over to Gary and um, get it fixed. I'm thinking that it's, it's definitely flooding out. So I'm I'm not a mechanic, but th th I know that's what it's doing. So it's either, to me, it's either one or three things that's happening. And it's either the, the float in the carburetor gets stuck. And it's just letting gas dump in there. And so when I give it some idle or give it some throttle, it floods out and then it's flooded. And so it sits there and a couple of hours it'll crank back up. Mm -hmm. Or the needle, needle and seat, it's sticking open, flooding it. Or maybe something as simple as a carburetor adjustment. Maybe it's getting too much fuel. But regardless, it's definitely, I'm... Very, very, very confident it is a fuel issue, and it's just it's just flooding out. Uh, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about mechanics, but yeah. I did read some comments, and a lot of people were saying, your battery doesn't sound very strong. Well, it's a brand new battery. It's a six-volt system. That's the way it sounds. It's not a 12-volt battery. It's a six-volt battery, and it, it, it's, it's, it's a totally different setup. And I know this totally is that, you know, I was thinking back, before well a long time ago i was thinking you could just jump the tractor off with the truck yeah and <clears throat> i was newly taught that you cannot do that because the truck has a 12 volt system and the tractor has a 12 uh, 6 volt system yes. and it'll just burn all those electronics up if you try to you have to take the battery out or disconnect it from everything you can't you can't leave the battery connected you can jump a 6 volt tractor or 6 volt system off with a 12 volt battery but the 12 volt battery has to be nothing attached to it so um, you mean the 6 volt has to be nothing attached no, to it no the 12 volt oh the 12 volt you cannot oh. you cannot leave it connected to your car. It's going to burn everything up in your car. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> but that's 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 what's going on there. Um, it'll run. I mean, it'll run for twenty or thirty minutes. But if I ever stop or slow it down a little bit, and then have to give it a little bit of gas, then um, it's flooding out. So it's, I don't think it's anything major. It's just I don't know how to fix it. Um, I have food with that carburetor 
many times. And I don't know. I'm going to learn how to do it, though. I got two carburetors that uh, I got. I got three carburetors total, one on the tractor. I got, actually, I got four carburetors. I got one on the tractor that Mr. Gary put on there for me. I got the one that Granddaddy had on there that I rebuilt that I was didn't rebuilt right. I got the original carburetor that's completely empty. There's nothing in it. It's just the shell that I need to get a kit for. And I have the Chinese carburetor that was bad from the day it came to the house. But you don't think the carburetor mm. needs to be replaced? You think it just no. needs a little tinkering? I think it just needs a little tinkering. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm not going to tinker with it. So no worries there. <laughs> So I don't think it's anything major at all. Um, I really don't. I really, really, really but don't. But too major for you to deal with. Is yeah. I have. I just I haven't got it figured out yet. I really don't. But I do want to buy a kit and rebuild the uh, the original carburetor and just have it. But I want to. I want to fool with it more and more and more so I can get more comfortable with it. Okay. Is what I would like. And okay. I may ask Mr. Gary to help me. I may go over there. Maybe when he works on it, maybe show me. Oh, Jason. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know what I'm thinking? We're going to have to buy some time. <laughs> I know. Or either you go going to have to work at night. Oh, goodness. Well, you already work at night. So. Yeah. Just a, another shift. A Just shift. another shift. Huh. Well, did y'all see my video where I started practicing with the goats to, um, to attempt already getting them on a stand? Because milk and time's getting near. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both pregnant. There's no doubt. And if I'm going to milk either of those girls or both of those girls, I can't just start when I'm ready to milk. You're gotta, right. You're exactly right. Got to <clears throat> start ahead of time. Got to go mm -hmm. through some training. And uh, we're still doing that. Um, yesterday, let me tell y'all. Yesterday was like the graduating ceremony. Yesterday was day three. Day three, and and both of them did wonderful. So here's the crazy thing about yesterday. So we saw a lot of comments saying we needed a ramp. Mm -hmm. So we ordered a ramp. We ordered a ramp. That fits our milk stand. Yesterday, they hopped right up. <laughs> both of them. But, with, with no problem. No help whatsoever. And the, the crazy <laughs> thing about that is... So, obviously, oh, my friend, goodness. Laura, at Simply Making It, she yeah. watched the video, and she read some of the comments. Yep. And she said, oh, gracious, help these people. They all think you need a ramp. Yep. She said, but in my experience, goats are jumpers. You don't need a ramp. She said, Chip, who was her husband, mm -hmm. built her ramp for her goats early on, and it was never used. They just, they're jumpers. They want to get up there by jumping. Well, here's, here's the thing reason why we never got a ramp for it is is we've seen what two of our mentors when it comes to goats is laura and um old south goat farm yeah and she milked four goats at one time mm -hmm. and none of neither one of them had ramps neither it never occurred so to it me. never occurred to us uh, you know we needed to get a ramp so um yeah a uh they hopped right up on there yesterday like it was. No yesterday was really good. It wasn't perfect now. Oh, it was perfect to me compared to what? Oh, it was compared to the day one and day two. Yeah. Day three, though, y'all animals are, um, I say it in a lot of my videos, animals are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Absolutely. I mean, they were almost trying to go into Peach's stall before it was time mm -hmm. because they already knew that there was a, potential that they were going to go in there and get some feed and yep. get some animal crackers. Those two, nobody else. They were the ones trying to get in the, in the room. And um, I mean, it was, it, it just, it went smooth. We did put the milk stand up against the wall. And the reason we didn't do that initially is because my thoughts were they might be scared if the stands up against the wall, they mm -hmm. might, you know, not want to get on it or whatever. But uh, we quickly realized that, you know, of course they would be more secure and I wasn't going to milk them out in the wide open. Right. We just did that for, for them feeling like it was safe for them to get on the stand. Yes. And when we trimmed hooves or trimmed hooves a couple of weeks ago, that's what they did. The stand mm -hmm. was in the middle of the room and that's how we got them on there. So um, 
Yesterday we did put it against the wall, so that part of it was different. We did. And literally hopped right on the stand. Hopped right on the and stand. <laughs> now, Fifi, she was not, she didn't get an A+, plus, but Capri even put her head in the she head did. gate by herself. She did. And Capri's the black and white one. Yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> I mean, it was. I, I was. Yeah. Jason had the pen in his pocket to the, to the head gate. I and, did. And it happened so fast that I was just like, where's the pen? <laughs> <laughs> And we're not giving them much grain to train with. We're just giving them enough to realize that they have a reward. Laura did tell me a couple of more tricks as to don't give them the cracker until they actually get their head out of the gate. And I grab their collar right. to lead them to the door. And she said, eventually, when they come off of that stand, they're going to go straight to the door without me leading them because that's what they know to do. Right. So, um, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. I don't know what I'm, you know... I started thinking, I was like, you know, how much milk am I going to have? There's only three of us. Well, four, including mama. But what? how much milk am I going to have? If I milk both of those girls, y'all, I'm going to have to close to two gallons of milk a day. We are going to have calcium levels that are like up here. <laughs> I mean. Maybe. I guess if we get too much, we could donate some to Laura if she needed it. Well, I thought about that and I said, you know, I could freeze it. Yeah. Oh, we I, definitely freeze it. Or I, we could freeze dry it. I know that. uh yeah. That uh, Wes has freeze-dried goat milk before. Yes. Um, I mean, we have options, but still, two gallons a day is a lot of milk. Yeah. So, it might come down to just milking one of the two, depending on which one's, you know, works out better. Right, right. And, um, well, which one's easier? I'm just going to say it. Whichever one's, one's easier. easier. Um, and we could, we could sell it for animal consumption only. But it's... It still needs to be refrigerated. Yeah. And I don't want people texting me saying, hey, can I get a gallon you, of milk? I guess you're right there, too. Um, I don't know how we could fix that. I don't know how. I, you know, there are some things that I would like to do with milk or milk. I would like to make our own yogurt. Yeah, sure. But there our again. our own cheese. Yeah. I would like to do those two things with it. And there again, we're going to be working a third shift because we already have all yeah. of our time tied up. But we are going to do it. And we're going to figure out later what we're going to do with all this milk. We'll figure it out. Did I'm not worried about it. You like goat's milk? I know who's going to like it, though. Who? The honeymooners. Well, and yeah. And peaches. So I was reading about things to do with goat milk. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you yeah. know, I mean, Laura makes soap with hers. Right. Terry, our friend. It old she, south. She actually sold it to a farm that yeah. raised deer. Mm-hmm. And um, so that was animal consumption. And she, she had most of her milk tied up in that. But as I'm reading about what to do with leftover milk, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it was about feed it to your chickens, feed it to your dogs, yeah. feed it to your cats, feed it. To, you know, of course, we're not doing it for that sole purpose. But right. when we have extras, of course, there's mouths around here that would love to have it. I agree. Um, I absolutely agree. My kitty cats are always going to get some. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to have to lock them out definitely when I milk. Yesterday, as Capri, which was the second one that came on the stand, was standing on the stand, Biscuit decides she's going to get up there. Well, Capri's head is in the head <clears throat> gate. Biscuit gets up there, and y'all, it looked like she was fixing a drink. <laughs> she did. Straight out of the teat. Like, like she had done this many times like, before. I mean, here, I'm fixing to take care of this <laughs> problem right here. And so I'm handling Capri's oh, teat, you know, yeah, trying to get yeah. her used to. We're not going to get in trouble for saying that word, are we? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, I'm handling her, and and here's Biscuit. Like, I'm going to do it, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> while the cat door, mm. you know, is like this, I have the ability to lock it, and I will yeah. have to lock them out while milking. And I learned that on the third day. <laughs> the yeah, third right. day of practice. Biscuit said, I know what this is. Maybe she could smell it. Yeah. You know, their udders are already filling up. Maybe she can. I don't know. Again. Animals are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Ah, uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> oh, way smarter than we give them credit for. That's for sure. But I'm going to tell you, I left out of that milk room yesterday with a big smile on my face. Now, I may be frowning today mm -hmm. because we don't ever know what an animal's going to do. And that's what keeps it, you know, fun. Right. You don't you don't know how they're going to react. But I'm going to tell y'all, I think that they are, they're much better than day one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that video, when we videoed, that was literally <clears throat> the first time we had ever tried it. 
yeah. literally. I mean, they had never been in that milk room before. Yesterday so. was amazing. Uh, somebody, I saw somebody ask, why didn't we put them in the Mildred stall and lead them? Yeah, that was our original plan, sort of, kind of. But I don't know how we would separate everybody in well, a timely manner. Here's the deal. Okay, so <clears throat> our goats are put up in a stall at night. Yes. So they're already in that stall. Right. So that would make an extra step to have to take them from that stall to Mildred's stall. Mm -hmm. Well, Mildred already knows that's her stall. So mm -hmm. she's not going to like the fact that goats are going in her stall. So getting all the goats out of their stall into Mildred's stall is not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work. And that's why we decided to just lead them through Peach's stall and come in through the through the barn. Yeah. And yesterday, it was no problem. Yesterday was really good. While y'all saw them <clears throat> trying to go all over the barn, that was the first day. And yesterday was totally different. I mean, I, they looked around. They looked around left and right to try to see, you know, what was going on. But they went right on in the milk room. I'm curious to see what happens this morning. Yes. Yep. I am too. Hopefully, hopefully, even better than yesterday. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't, that's okay. They're animals. You know, when Mary Carl was born, she didn't do well with um, <clears throat> the milk. What do you call it? Well, she did okay. We didn't ever have to have special formula. Remember, though, at first we just had to switch up a little bit here and there. Well, we... And then a lot of people said that, you know, if I gave her fine goat's milk, but, you know, yeah. we couldn't. Right, but, right. But, um, yeah. They, oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you you know, somebody finds out yeah. that you're giving your child goat's milk, you're in big trouble. But I do know a lot of people that, lot that of have people. to do that because mm -hmm. their child's gut is not ready for... It's so good for you. Formula. It's I mean, so good for you. nobody has a problem with breast milk, but... Mm -hmm. Um, when they're trying to get them on formula, then yeah, goat's milk seems to always work. Always works. Always works. Always works. And it's going to work for us too. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> no more babies though. I'm we're not, excited. We're not, no, I mean human babies. Oh no. <laughs> we're not going to try. No, <laughs> try. I'm just excited about the goat's milk. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's going to be fun y'all. It it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And here's the thing. This is something that we've been wanting to do for 15 years. I mean, literally. Um, ever since we met Laura and Chip Spencer, um, it, we knew we wanted to milk our goats. Yeah. And that was our purpose with the first ones that we ever got. Mm -hmm. And look at where we are now. I mean, yeah. we've never had an area that we could milk them. We've never had, time has just never been right. Yep. But I think this is it. I think this is the year and I think it's going to work. I agree. So. I agree. <sighs> we shall see. We shall see. <clears throat> I just had to set my coffee back down. I'm not ready for a hot sip right yet. I'm sweating. <laughs> oh, so it was talking about me and Mary Carl watching TV and then the basketball uh -huh. game. Well, me and Mary Carl have decided we've watched Star Wars before. Right. All of them. But we get confused because they come out with a new one and you don't know where it falls. And, you know, the original Star Wars was, you know, Star Wars, which ended up the and changed the name to The New Hope. And it was Star what? Wars, and then Empire Strikes Back, and then Return of the Jedi. And then they came out with all the prequels. And we got confused. And so we decided we're going to watch them in chronological order. Because they got them like that now. It's episode one, episode two, episode three, and they all got names. And that's how come it's renamed New Hope. Because it's episode six or seven. I didn't know that. And so that's what we've been doing. And y'all... <clears throat> We have thoroughly enjoyed it. We finished episode three last night. Well, I'm going to tell y'all a secret. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't like Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh. that's just not my thing. So I'm glad that they are enjoying it. But um, And it makes a lot more sense now instead of all that skipping around business. I got gotcha. you. Well, I mean, I have seen people on social media and, and whatnot say, you know, should I watch this one first or which one should I watch first? Yeah. So I guess it makes sense to finally put them in chronological order. <clears throat> well, I got a buddy, uh, Lee, and he is a Star Wars fanatic. And I asked him several years ago which way to watch them. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and I thought it was going to be a simple answer, like definitely watch them this way. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be it. <laughs> You don't, you don't ask a Star Wars geek that question and expect to get a simple answer. 
Well, was it, was it like, like four paragraphs long, the okay. pros and cons to each way. And we, we, so we watched them the way they came out. So we, watched, oh. we watched them the way they came out from well, oldest. Well, you would think that's to, supposed to be the way you're supposed to watch them. But they're not in order that way. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. So, hmm. anyways, we're, we're watching them in order. And it is, uh, it is, so far, it has been really fun. We really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Well, I'm glad I don't have to keep up with it. Because that's something <laughs> I, I just don't understand. I don't get it. You know, my mind doesn't work like that. Yeah. And I'm not interested in it. So, they are, and that just tells me that their minds work the same. Yeah. Work the <clears> same. <throat> I'm just an outcast, I think. No, there's a lot of people that probably don't like Star Wars. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure. going to go out and blast it because I don't like it. I mean, and it's everybody not like, has personal <clears throat> opinions. Yeah, yeah, it is. But me, I think me and me and Carl like everything. You do, pretty I think much. I like everything. Probably except for the things that I like. Just give us something to watch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just give us. I don't know. You like those Lifetime type shows. I do. Um, <laughs> the Hallmark movies and the Lifetime <laughs> movies and stuff like that. But I'm graduating. I'm watching <laughs> I'm watching more series. And I'm going to tell you all that was the worst thing I could have ever done. Because <laughs> like yesterday, it rained all day. And my mind is saying, I got to see that next episode. Yeah. And I've never been a TV watcher. But since these series have come about, my mama watches a, a good bit of TV. And obviously she's older and, mm -hmm. you know, it occupies her time. But she'll tell me from time to time, what are you watching now? And I'll tell her and she'll say, you ought to watch such and such. I say, well, I can't watch anything that's got more than one season. And that's been my that's been my cutoff up until this point. I have, will not watch anything with more than one season because I get too involved in it. Yeah. So I'm now watching something. Don't ask me what it's called. I could not tell you. It has four seasons. <laughs> Four seasons. And Mary Carl asked me yesterday while it was pouring down rain. <laughs> oh, goodness. What episode are you on? And I said nine. And she said, how many episodes are there? And I said, well, there's four seasons. Oh. <laughs> she knew that uh, I was going to be watching this series for a while. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. I mean, you know, times have been different for me lately. And I've gotten, finally gotten to a point where something, there's something that I enjoy doing. Well, good. Yeah. I'm Good. glad too, because otherwise I'd be sitting there doing like this, and that gets kind of old <laughs> when you've seen old. all the feed. It does get old. <clears throat> so I saw Michael said he still got his Yoda from when he was little. What might be worth some money, Mike? It might be. Might be worth some money. Speaking of Michael, so me and Michael like to uh, we like to play jokes and have fun and. So oh my gracious, y'all! Michael has this thing about about uh my hair, yeah, being long, and he thinks it's absolutely fabulous. Mm. And I told you that you know uh, it looks like Fabio just being funny. Well, Michael will actually message me from time to time and <laughs> and send me little Fabio things because Jason's hair blows in the wind, and you know it's long and it's <sighs> here we go. So I made Michael a little video. And uh, I thought you guys would get a kick out of this. But uh, y'all ready? <laughs> Keep letting it play. <laughs> oh, gracious. <laughs> When Jason showed that to me, <laughs> I just about fell out of my chair. Oh, needless to say, Michael got it. He got it. <laughs> Thankfully. Oh, I'm glad I didn't send it to the wrong person. Oh, that's that's right. <laughs> what if you'd send it to like Jason oh, from Pedals goodness. from the Past? <laughs> you know. Y'all's oh, no, friendship is based on plants. Oh. And he would have really thought you were trying to <laughs> pick him up. <laughs> oh. oh, we like to have some fun. Yeah, we every like now and then. <laughs> every now and again. Oh, but the crazy thing is, after after he got done crying, he begged me to post it. He did. <laughs> My glasses are steaming. I'm laughing so hard. 
Well, Dee Dee's <laughs> breathing on me so that my pants are wet. She must have liked that. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Oh, I man. thought it was pretty clever. And the most <laughs> clever part of it is I was with Jason when he made that video. I didn't even know it. I had no idea. So we got home that afternoon and he had made the, the video already and he shows it to me to play. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> how did he do that and me not even know it? Oh, what goodness. else is he doing that I don't know about? Oh, goodness. Gracious. Maybe making funnies about me. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Oh, clever, clever, clever. <laughs> oh, and I don't know why it hit me. I don't know why, but it did. It only took just a, uh, used a slow motion. That's why you didn't see it. Uh, <laughs> it was because, you well, know. Well, still, a, I would have seen you holding the phone up. Four, I mean. A, a three second slow motion video, you know, it was like five minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all. Oh, goodness gracious. Poor Jason. Oh, my eyes is watering. Well, at least mine doesn't have anything. Yeah, I'm glad anymore. I didn't. Or I didn't send it to Tracy. It oh, just yeah. Didn't yeah, that would have been. Or Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick would have thought it was funny. He would have thought it was funny. Not to say Tracy wouldn't have, but she wouldn't have got it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Speaking of Tracy. Yeah. I Ooh. noticed that she and Jean are going to start doing lives. Yeah. At... If I'm not mistaken, 7.30 Central Time on Monday evenings. Really? Yes. Yeah, so I write that down. Um, they haven't done this before. It's going to be something new for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, if y'all are in... What day? Monday, so at 7.30 Central Time. If y'all are interested in gardening, I'm sure that she would be happy to answer questions mm -hmm. and uh, go over, you know, anything that you may be questioning about. Not that Jason can't answer some of it. Tracy's just... Yeah, yeah. That's what she lives and breathes. Yeah, she's awesome. Jason lives and breathes about that hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, I got to get, I keep saying that. I got to get Tracy over here. Yeah, yeah. We keep I saying keep a saying lot that. of things. <laughs> I keep saying it. I got to ask her opinion about what trees I need to plant, too. Oh, y'all, this is interesting. So, Jason, at first, all I could see was planting trees down the driveway. Yeah. After we got Mr. Greg to come in, complete the driveway, build the pond, I wanted trees down the driveway. I think it's beautiful mm -hmm. when driveways are lined with trees. However, we have a ditch on one side that serves as drainage. Yep. And on the other side, we now have animal fencing. Yep. So that leaves very little space there. Correct. And uh, that kind of wiped away the thought of, adding trees down the driveway because it could only go so far and it was stock. Correct. Correct. And <clears throat> I'm not a garden designer like Tracy, but I still think that'd look kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, you got six trees and then it bam stops. I agree. So Jason told me the other day, he said, I want you to look at something. So I came outside and he said, I want to plant three trees right there. And I was like, where? And he said, <laughs> in that wide open area right there, I want to plant three trees. And I, you know, oh, goodness. I, I just, I, I can't see the finished product. I, I have to, I know what he's talking about, but I still, I'm just like, okay, yeah. what do you want me to say? Okay. Yeah. So I'm all for it. But when we went to Petals from the past this week, Jason talked to Jason mm -hmm. about trees that we can plant. And would you believe that I remembered all three of them? Did you really? I was at Mama's last night while y'all were watching TV and I was telling her about us planting the trees. Yeah. And <clears throat> The nut all oak is number one. Well, not number, number one. one. That's not, the, not in order. Right. Number two is, I don't remember what kind of holly, but I remember a holly. Savannah. Savannah holly. A Savannah holly. And number three was a crab apple. Callaway crab apple. Well, she said not one thing about any of the trees except for, I love a crab apple. I think they're beautiful. And I was already kind of leaning towards the crab apple. And I got one planted in the uh, fruit orchard is over there. Is that the same <clears> kind? No, the the cordon adjacent, the Callaway crab apple, is going to produce fruit, but it's a really tiny fruit, uh -huh. and it's going to be more for wildlife, wildlife, birds, and and that kind of thing, and, um, and bees. Bees are going. He said the bees will flock to the crab apple tree, and I think that that <clears throat> you know is a deciding factor for us is we want to take care of wildlife, obviously. Yes. And we want to help our bees. So if we could do those two things with that tree, we may have a decision. Already. Right. Right. But I don't know. 
So yeah, it's called a Callaway crab apple. Callaway crab, and it gets really big, right? It gets big, and that's what we want. <laughs> yep. Is that's a big, wide open field, and we're talking about where that blue pipe is ran yeah. that goes down to the pond. Right. Um, that area is just wide open, and it wasn't like that when we bought this place. No, you know what? Speaking of that, <clears throat> it's going to take me some time to do, um, but I am eventually going to make a video of before, before and, after. and after yeah i am i'm gonna make that video it's just, it's gonna it's not gonna be super quick that's it because i gotta go back and find i i save a lot of my footage so i have to go back and find it so it's gonna be a thing before and after but i would love to do a video of what the farm looked like when we got here and what it looks like now because it is completely different. And you know, while I've hung my head many a days thinking things are going slow, yeah. When I look back and I think about what all has been done here and the short amount of time that oh we've my been gracious. here, you know, it's kind of like, oh gracious, we have accomplished a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. We have a, I mean, the fruit orchard was an overgrown mess, mess, mm -hmm. and we had a mulcher come in and he took care of all that for us, but yep. we still didn't see yep. the ability to ever plant fruit trees in that area. No. I mean, it was in, until Mr. Greg came in and, you know, actually built the house pad yeah. that we took a couple of those big trees down that were over there mm -hmm. and we could actually see, Hey, this property could be developed into something. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, the, 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 the area that gets me, is the the emu and the geese pasture right. the pond is oh yes that that area was oh y'all totally even even where the tree that mary carl likes the big tree where the emu nest is uh -huh. and the daffodils uh -huh. you know you can even walk over no, there when so we planted sick. those daffodils there it was a total mess and it looks so much better we I mean we got a ton of stuff we need to do but it looks way, way different and way, I mean, it looks, well, I mean, I just floored because I'll see like when I'm editing videos, if, uh, if I need a clip of something, I'll go back and look mm -hmm. and try to find it and you see, and I'll see stuff like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that the video would serve purpose for people that are trying to buy a property that you don't have to have it looking <laughs> perfect from the That's beginning right. because <clears throat> we had to see through that. We had to see through those flaws. Yeah. And we had to see through where um, an old mobile home sat and lots of concrete blocks were surrounding mm -hmm. for whatever reason. You know, we had to see through that. Yeah. And we had to yeah. imagine what we could do a little bit at a time. And it, it worked. I mean, it worked. Yeah, it this, worked. This property had been sitting for two years. With, with nobody on it. With nobody, nobody on it. And mm -hmm. not only that, had been sitting for sale. Yeah, and the reason it sat for sale is because people didn't see the potential. Yeah, I agree. And even a friend of ours, <clears throat> when we bought this property, he <laughs> he told my mama that <laughs> he didn't know why what we saw in this place, <laughs> and he couldn't believe that we were leaving <laughs> our farm for this. Yeah, and and you have to. I mean, that's just like comments that are negative on. On, on videos or yeah. emails that are negative you have to throw that kind of stuff out the window because what matters is what you can see that's right and we could see you know potential and we did so it was rough the old barn site was rough and while it it's rough. not where we <clears throat> want it no i mean quite. our end end goal will never be reached and that's that's the joy yep. of us having mm -hmm. this place is we're never going to run out of things to do Never going to run out of things to do. We're never going to run out of things to do. There will always be work that needs to be done, and we'll never be completely satisfied. But um, that doesn't mean we're not happy. Right. I mean, we're happy. It's just it's just work. It is. the. Uh, it wouldn't be a lazy man's pro um, no. paradise. If you were a lazy person, <clears throat> this property would sit like it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely. The the, the thing that, that gets me right now is the the... The Alabama Potage Garden or the Kitchen Garden, right? That one just, I, but I know we gotta get the 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 cow area done first. But the the backyard part really, really eats at me. Well, <clears throat> I, I don't think that it's gonna be that much longer before yeah. we can move on to it. And um, 
it, it's easy to go out there and say, well, we got this many irons in the fire and only, you know, this much time to do it. Right. But our, our time we hope is endless. I right. mean, we hope that we have many days to come that we can work on these projects and not have to look at it as, Hey, this has to be done by May. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, we, we have time and that's the beauty in it. It's, it is. It is. And that's why I got to get Tracy over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tracy, Tracy Tracy's not going to help with the cattle fence. So we, no. we definitely. Well, she can... did help with not the cattle fence. Yeah. But she did help me with ideas for the the fence in the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we got to get, we got to get our irons put out yep. of the fire first. Yep. And we were waiting on one thing to come in. And it came in yesterday. That's right. And that was the lockjaw clips. I hope that these are going to be as amazing as uh, we've been told they we've are. We've been told that these things are awesome. So, fingers crossed it is. Because uh, some. I'm all about efficiency. And those clips, you know, what I read, it's almost four to one or five to one. You can put on five of those lockjaw clips or four of those lockjaw clips to one of your regular twisty tie clips. And when you're talking about 500 T post, yeah, that's a lot of time. It is. It's a lot of time. That is a lot of time. Well, if my health hadn't gotten in the way, we would be long done with this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We would and on to the backyard. That's right. But I'm anticipating being back to semi brook. Yeah. <laughs> after I go to the rheumatologist in April. Yep. And um and, and after that happened, y'all, I told Jason, I said, you better look out. Because if I get back to where I was, it's on. That's right. It's on. And we're gonna finish things that have been and Jason can't do it all by himself. Yeah. There there's no way. I mean, pulling that fence that's in the front that's for Moody and Mildred, somebody needs to drive the tractor, which is me. Somebody needs to use a air stapler or whatever and then somebody's got to put clips on so you know it's going to take both of us for right. sure to get that done that's right and we're going to get it done <clears throat> we're going to get it we're going to get it and hopefully hopefully in the next few weeks i don't know how long it's going to take us but next two or three weeks the the cattle pasture is doing it yeah i hope so because yeah um well we want to move the chickens we want to move yeah. the the bus into the area where moody and joe and, mm -hmm. and mo are yep. now because we're just about out of garden space. That's right. So our plan is in the future to plant row crops or, um, you know, beans or things that take more space right. in that pasture where Moody and, and the boys have been. And that ground should be good and fertile. It is. And that's why that area that we're gardening now, our original area, is is transforming is because... The chickens. And don't forget, we ran Moody and the boys through there. That's true as well That's so true. um even though i'm not physically putting compost in it with the with, with the cover cropping we're doing and the chickens are running through there it's adding organic matter to it all naturally so um our soil is really really just it looks it looks nice and guys if i don't know if you remember when we planted the flower garden the first one with the flower farm oh my gosh remember we had to take a drill in an auger mm -hmm. to drill the holes and when we got finished i had blisters all on my hand and there were some times that the drill wouldn't even the auger wouldn't even go in the ground mm -hmm. to plant the flowers well i can remember now, that pillar was just at, bouncing oh man on the top of the the earth but now look at it it is it is night and day different well, in just this short time that the chickens have been moved, which hadn't been very long, yeah. into their new area. Oh, yeah. I showed we, it in the video. we constantly rotate it. I mean, it's not going to be long before they're going to be need to be moved again. Yeah, they need to be moved again. Because they have done their job yep. in that area. Yep. And um, <clears throat> it's constantly being fertilized in, in that area. Of course, you know, we're not planting in that area where they, they're not coming out of here this month and we're planting there next month. Yep. It's, it's being rotated and it's being worked and. I don't know. Things are coming together. It is. And uh, and that's just something I absolutely love, too, is, is, is gardening. I really do love it. Um, I saw some people say that the crab apples make a good jelly. I, like I said, I got a legit crab apple in the fruit orchard that produces big crab apples. I can't think of the darn name of it. Um, man, the fruit orchard looks amazing. You see, the, you ain't been over there. 
The well, figs are green. Oh, no. no. Oh, I, I drove by it yesterday, yeah. but I didn't walk through it. The apple trees look amazing. The uh, pear trees look amazing. The blackberries look amazing. But I, that, that's another thing I got to do. I got to build arbors for the grapes and the musky dines and, and the kiwis. Needs to be done this year. Yeah, needs to be done this year. Well, we... Um, <laughs> We decided that since our auger <clears throat> would not dig into the ground anymore, that we would buy a new tip mm -hmm. for the end of it. And that tip bolts on, and it's, it's simply a spiral. Uh, it looks just like the auger, except it's a tip. And that tip is what gets the ground started. That's right. Well, now that it's rained here a lot and the ground is softer, we probably wouldn't have a problem anyway. But when it gets to that hot summertime, there's no way we could dig in this dirt. And we got a new tip. Yeah, the new tip's going to help us. Um, I actually, I think we really wouldn't need it, a new tip for... That's what I'm saying. For it's, the fruit orchard, but we would need it for, for the other spots for sure. And we've got a couple of gates <clears> that we realized that we were short We needed on. to add, yeah. When we're crazy how we thought we had it all planned out, but when we're out there in the back around the barn and the new pastures trying to do stuff, we realized we should have put a gate here. Um, we need a gate here. So we're going to add those two. And we need to do that before the cows get moved. And we decided, too, that we need to put a fence around the actual move mansion. Well, Jason decided this. Yeah, I still don't really understand what he's talking about. But <laughs> I'll just be digging holes and I'll just, yeah. say, you know, he can just say back yeah. up right here. And that's all I need to know. So we're going we're going we're going to put a fence around the move mansion with 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 gates. And that way it'll stay open except when we need to go in there and do things because that's where the head shoot is and when we put hay in there right kind of like what we're doing now with moody mm -hmm. and the boys separate except we can separate them and get the hay in there without them you know messing around or whatever and i kept thinking about the head shoot if we ever had to put moody in the head shoot or mildred in the head shoot or whoever how are we going to lead them to it how are we going to get them in there and not the other one trying to come over there and help so I and think it's gonna be another better. thing is, is um, while Moody gets loving, Moody's loving is different than Mildred's. Moody gets loving basically over the fence because it's not uh, feasible for me to go in there with Moody and put my arms on him <laughs> without him <laughs> slinging that big head. Yeah. So <clears throat> in order to um, give Mildred the same loving that she's had, Right. You know, um, there will be times when if Moody's in that area, we can go in there right. and, and love on Mildred. And not that he'll be separated, but he can still be loved on. He just, uh, I can't, I can't potentially get harmed. Yeah, I, I, I kind of know him, so, but I don't want you going in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't feel, that's one thing I don't feel comfortable doing. Yeah. If you don't yeah. feel comfortable doing something, you definitely mm, shouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I get nervous. He's, he's a big boy. Another thing that I thought of this past week, I was like, hmm, that pasture that's next to Loretta and Gus, where the goats used to be, am I right? Yes. Yeah. Is um, an open area that has a fence all the way around it. That's right. Well, guess what? I decided that we ought to plant a field full of watermelons. Mm-hmm. Because not only do we love watermelons, Gus and Loretta love watermelons, and all the critters love watermelons. Yep. And all we'll have to do is stick some seeds in the ground. If they come up, they come up. If they don't, they don't. Right. And if we have extras, we sell them at the roadside stand. Yep. So that's our plan with that area is to, to fill it full of watermelons. That is our plan. Actually, uh, order some watermelon seeds from Hoss. They, they, may be here. they may be here today. They may be. And also... I got um my uh my flower order too. I ordered some zinnias as well. So I'll be starting the zinnias and seed trays when they come in. Somebody said something about pumpkins. Well, we could do that. We don't plant plant pumpkins till July. But I, I got those though, and I plans for those to we can't put them in there. Um why well, say pumpkins? I got winter squash to be to be planted. Um we could do some pumpkins. We could. Winter squash. Winter squash would serve the same purpose as well if we wanted to give some to the animals. And I also saw that somebody said we should plant pecan trees out in that front area. Well, you just planted two pecan trees. Pecan trees are going to be in the back. Pecan trees are slow, slow, slow. 
Uh, we want something that's going to be a medium to, to fast grower for the front. Something that we can see results yep. fairly quickly. Yep. Kind of like my mama did with the um, mimosa tree that she planted. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to plant mimosa trees out there. Oh, no, mo no, yeah, no mimosa trees. No they, mimosa. they can be, uh, they can be invasive. You have to be careful. Mm -hmm. My daddy tried to tell her. And also the Bradford pears. She wanted oh, to yeah. see results real quick, and that's what she got. So again, extremely invasive. Yeah. So we don't want we yeah. don't want anything like that. But yet we don't want to slow as pecans either. Right. And a nut all oak tree is a medium to fast growing tree, believe it or not. And it's an oak. Usually oak trees are slow growers. Slow growers. Yeah. Yep. But um, yeah. I, I gotta get Tracy over here. We gotta we're, sit we're down looking, and look at a date. We're looking towards <laughs> the future. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> we want to be able to see this this farm temporary. Well, no, it's not. It's not ever going to be at its full capacity to where we want it. But we want to be able to see it. That's right. The way we would kind of want to see it. Yep. I um, agree. Right. Right. Well, I mm. wanted to tell y'all something that you may already know, but you may not. And if you don't follow these guys, then hop over there right now, do us a favor, and go over to our Brown Farmhouse. Um, our Brown Farmhouse, they are spectacular people. Dadley and Nico and their children are just, uh, they're an excellent example of a homesteading family. Right. And the first time we ever met them, we knew that they were good people. And they have a young son, Pharaoh, who has recently found out that he has a heart condition. And he is going to have surgery the first part of April, April the 10th, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. to repair a faulty um, area of his heart. Being done now, he's going to have, he's not going to have any issues later in life. Right. And I know that is very scary for them, for their son to have to go through that open heart surgery. But they, as parents, are making the best decision in doing that now. You know, I've met people in the past as adults that may have had a faulty heart at birth. And this was many years ago. Mm -hmm. And you would never know it. So y'all just go over and, and tell them you're praying, you're thinking about their son, Pharaoh, and you're thinking about them because this is going to be a difficult time for their entire family. Yep. And they are very special people to us. Yes, they are. So our Brown Farmhouse, they uh, <laughs> they have a YouTube channel as well as Facebook. Mm -hmm. and, Great content. Great content. Y'all just show them some love. We would appreciate it. They're good folks. Well, I didn't want to end on that, but. We're not. Okay. We're going to end on Fabio. We're going to end on Fabio. <laughs>
<clears throat> and my job is to take some landscape timbers. Yeah. Which I've been planning to do this for yeah. quite some time. Yeah. Drill holes in them, put some rebar in it and on that bank because we put pine straw there. Yeah. And we put pine straw there because mulch will just slide down the mat. Yeah. Pine straw should Works stay. Works better. Yeah. And it will stay if I get those landscape timbers yep. in there. We got to do that too. And I'm having a pretty good day today. Ooh. So we better make hay. Let's do that because <laughs> I got, well, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> My mind's going. <laughs> he likes to hear when I'm having a good day. That means we might accomplish something. <laughs> My mind's going, y'all. We got it. We got goat training. Yeah. We got goat training first thing this morning. Oh, I may yeah, not yeah, even yeah. need yeah. you for the goat yeah. training. Yeah. You know, these past three days, Jason has had to stop what he's doing to lift those girls up on the goat stand. That's right. Well, maybe past that point. Maybe past that point. So uh, y'all don't forget that's that point. That we're we're having a contest between the butter caramel and the southern pecan coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you which one I like because which one I like doesn't matter. It's which one you guys like that's and right. which one you want to stick around. Yep. So y'all, um, at the end of the month, we're going to do a little test and determine which one you guys want to stick around. Kelly Joe, we did get the alfalfa bites. Yes, we did. Matter of fact, today may be day one of giving them. Okay, good deal. Mm hmm. Good so deal. That goes. Good deal. Well, my cup's empty. Is yours? <laughs> my, almost. Almost. Well, almost empty. We got work to do. And we do. Y'all probably do too. So y'all get that Fabio image out of your head. Fabio mm -hmm. Jason. <laughs> get that image out of your head. Because if you don't. You're not going to accomplish anything. Oh, goodness. And don't tell us your results, what you like best through email or through comments here. We're not yeah. we're, we're not going to go by that. We're, it's going to yep. be a poll. So we appreciate y'all. We do appreciate y'all. And I see a lot of people saying I need to send that video to Lister. Oh, gracious. <laughs> y'all be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Reckon we'll 